Hey Ingham R, I'm so excited to be here. I'm Beverly Stubblefield and I want to let you know some things that are happening here on the hill. Spring and Summer Children's Choir will meet this evening at 6 p.m. in the Family Life Center. This will include all children ages three years old through sixth grade. Ingham R Baptist is collecting items for tornado victims in the Amory area. A semi-trailer is parked in front of the youth sanctuary for approximately three weeks to collect donations. The trailer will be open for donations during daylight hours. May is Nurses Month. The Baptist Women Daytime Group would like to acknowledge Ingemar's nurses today. There's a survival kit for you located in the mailboxes in the prayer room. Don't forget to pick yours up after church. The Children's Department will be having a summer kickoff celebration this coming Wednesday evening. We would love for you to come out and celebrate with us. The Associational Senior Adult Rally will be held tomorrow at Temple Baptist in Myrtle starting at 10. The bus will leave the church at 9 a.m., so don't be late. And that's what's happening on the hill. for that uh, that great uh, on the hill. I'm just encouraged by that. How's everybody doing this morning? It is a joy to be here today. I also, I want to, real quick before I get going, I just want to take a second and apologize. One of our air conditioned units upstairs is out, so if it's a little stuffy, uh, I apologize. We're working on getting that fixed. Uh, also, it might just be because there's a lot of people in here. So uh, anyway, I want to just let you know how grateful I am that you're here this morning. You could be anywhere else, but you're here. Uh, my name is Rob Jones. I'm the senior pastor here at Ingemar Baptist Church. Uh, if you would take just a second, there's a QR code that's on the front of your bulletin or a visitor card that's in front of you, and you can scan that or fill that out. We'd like to just uh, get you to fill that out so we can send something to you to let you know how much we appreciate you being here to worship with us uh, this morning. I am excited. There it is. I won't say that every Sunday. I am excited because I'm excited every Sunday, but I'm excited uh, just to see what the Lord has in store for us. This morning as we recognize our seniors, we sing God's praises and we dive into his word here in just a little while. I'm thankful that you're here. I'm going to open us in a word of prayer and then we'll get started. So pray with me. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you for this morning, this beautiful morning that you've given us, Lord, to come and to worship you. God, I pray that just for a moment, for this hour or so that we're in this sanctuary, that, Father, we would put all the distractions and the noise out of our minds we would take a moment and we would focus on you and what you're doing in our lives. God, help our hearts and minds to be receptive to you. Draw us nearer and closer to you, Father, through this service. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you please stand for the procession of our graduating high school seniors. time we're going to recognize our graduates so I'm going to ask brother Avery to come forward as he already is <laughs> and so seniors when your name is called I'm going to ask all the seniors if you would to please stand and then when, if you would when you 
When your name is called, would you please come and uh, receive a copy of God's Word? By the way, I just want to say we're very proud of you and uh, look forward to seeing what God's going to do in your lives as you cross over this great milestone. Before we do that, though, I want to recognize uh, some other graduates that aren't uh, graduating from high school. Uh, I'm not going to call my name, but Mrs. Uh, but graduating from Mississippi State University is uh, Jordan Elise Gooch and Allie Williams Randolph, graduating from the University of Mississippi. Excuse me, that was Mississippi State. That was heresy that I just said that was calling that University of Mississippi. Anyway, Jordan is uh, graduating with a Bachelor of Business in Administration and Marketing. Allie Williams Randolph is graduating with a Bachelor of Business Administration in marketing as well. Graduating from the University of Mississippi now, Ole Miss, <laughs> is uh, Heather Renee Gamble. She's graduating with a Juris Doctorate. And then graduating from Northeast Mississippi Community College is Lexi Stanford. She's graduating with an Associate of Applied Science in Nursing. We're very proud of all of our graduates. So at this time, uh, if you come forward when you hear your name called, Graduating from Ingemar Attendance Center, first of all, is Anna Grace Gaines. Savannah Ann Goins. Audrey Caroline Maupin. Demia Chanel Skelton. Kinsley Dawn Sprouse. And then graduating from New Albany High School is Meredith Elise Oler. And then graduating from Christian Home Educators of Northeast Mississippi is Ariana Fallon Foshi. And Salvador Alexander Marks. Let's just give our uh, graduates one more round of applause, tell them how much we appreciate them. Guys, I'm going to ask the Lord's blessing over you guys as you get ready to go on your separate ways. What an exciting time in your life this is. But I want to just take a moment and I want to pray for you specifically as uh, you get ready to go out into the real world. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for today. God, we thank you for this chance once again that you've given us, Father, to come into this place. Lord God, to worship you. Father, I pray that you would just place your hand of blessing and favor and grace and mercy over each one of these graduates that are here today. Lord, as they get ready to go out into the world, Lord, into a dark world, into a, a frightening world, into a difficult and challenging world, Father, I pray that you would give each and every one of them the strength to stay focused and fixated on you and on you alone all the days of their life. So, Father, be with these graduates. Walk with them. Lead, guide, and direct them in every way. Father, we love you, we thank you, and we pray all these things in the name above all other names, and that is the name of Jesus. Amen.
Seeing as you'll have commencement in a few days, and commencement by its very definition does not mean end, it means beginning. Beginning of your next steps from here to your future. You're in church today. Question is, is Jesus in your heart to take this next step? If he is, you can be like the psalmist, psalmist when he said, where can I go from your spirit? And where can I flee from your presence? Nowhere. Because God in your heart is with you all the time. Let's stand together and sing.
Amen. Amen. I am not afraid because I know who sits on the throne and his name is Jesus Christ. And because of that, I am not afraid, choir. Thank you for that marvelous, marvelous singing. What a joy, what a joy, what a joy that it is to be here today in the, in the Lord's house, in the presence of the Almighty. If you would, open your Bibles with me to the book of Romans. The letter to the church in Rome, Romans chapter 12, is where we're going to begin here in just a few moments. Romans chapter 12, beginning in verse 1 here in just a little while, but as you're turning there, maybe some of you can relate to this. Uh, I served my, most of you know this, I served my country for five years in the United States Marine Corps. I'm very proud of my service. Uh, it was the best, worst time of my life. If some of you who are uh, in the military know that phrase very well. Uh, but uh, spent five years in the Marine Corps, and I can remember, choir, that as I was getting out of the Marine Corps, first of all, they make you go through like classes uh, on how to reacclimate and how to readjust back to civilian life, <laughs> and I probably need them, and still do need them maybe at times. Uh, but there was this sense, even though I had plans, even though I had a, a, a purpose when I got out, I knew, I thought I knew where I was going. There was still this sense that when I got out of the United States Marine Corps, there was this sense of, well, now what do I do, <laughs> right? You know, you, you, you dedicate, you devote your whole life for five years in my case. Some of you have retired, you've spent 20 plus years in the military. You know what I'm talking about? You devote all of your time, your energy into one thing, and then it comes to an end, and there's this sense about you that says, well, now what do I do? <laughs> but sometimes it's not just the Marines. I've had other times in my life where I graduated with my bachelor's degree. I worked so hard to get my bachelor's degree, and then I thought, well, now what do I do? <laughs> I graduate next Friday. Hopefully, they still have to grade a few things. But I graduate next Friday with my master's degree, and there's a sense of me like, well, now what do I do Right <laughs> with my life? I think if we're all honest with ourselves, there's points in our lives where we come to a moment in life where we say, now what do I do? And I think if we're honest, there's constantly in our lives a whisper in our ears where we say to ourselves, well, now what do I do? Oh, we might have a plan, Brother Phil. We might have a, a, an itinerary, we might have an order of worship that we tried to stick to this morning, but I messed that up. We might have it all, all played out, but there's still a sense of now what do I do? Well, I would like to suggest to you today that the Word of God, the perfect, infallible, holy, fully inspired Word of God tells us what we're supposed to do. And not only does it tell us what we're supposed to do, it tells us why we're supposed to do it and how we're supposed to go about doing that thing which we're supposed to do. That's a lot of words. Let's let the Word of God speak for itself. Romans chapter 12, beginning in verse 1. The Word of God says this. I'm reading out the New American Standard. Paul writes to this church in Rome and he says, Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may, be, may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. I believe here in this, these two verses of Scripture, I believe that Paul is writing to this church that is in Rome, or the churches that are in Rome, and he's telling them what to do, why they should do it, and how they ought to go about doing it. So I don't want to go too much in the weeds here. I don't want to uh, bore you with some theological discourse. But what you need to know is that from verses 1 through 11 in the book of Rome, Romans, Paul is is writing his, his, basically his theology. The book of Romans is the, the largest compilation of Paul's theology that we have 
in the scriptures. Uh, the book of Romans is, quite frankly, maybe one of the most influential books of all 66 books. Uh, it was the book of Romans that Martin Luther started the uh, Protestant Reformation after reading Romans. Uh, Romans is a marvelous book when it comes to theology. And so from verse, or chapters 1 through 11, Paul is writing, uh, he's giving a theological discourse, you might say, to the church that is there in Rome. He's writing his beliefs, okay? And then chapter 12 begins. Somebody read the very first word in chapter 12. Just shout it out, somebody. Therefore. 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 You ever heard a preacher say, if you see a therefore, you need to know what it's there for? Well, this is one of those cases. In chapter 12, Paul begins to write to this church that is in Rome. He's giving them a set of instructions on how they should practically apply chapters 1 through 11. Okay, so chapter 12 begins the practical application of chapters 1 through 11. Does that make sense? I hope I haven't confused you. Paul is writing to them to tell them how they ought to practice or apply their theology. That's what the therefore is there for. And he tells us in these two verses, he tells the church in Rome and therefore us, he tells us what they ought to be doing, why they ought to do it, and how they should go about doing it. Number one is the what. Somebody say what. What? 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 <laughs> yeah, if my kids say that, I'd say, sir. You know? <laughs> Look at verse 1, if you would. Paul writes, he says, Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, look at this, to present yourself, your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. In a nutshell, Paul writes to this church and he says, you need to present yourselves as a living sacrifice. Well, that's kind of weird, right? It's kind of weird. What is, what is he talking about? He tells his church, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Well, think back with me to the Old Testament sacrificial system for just a moment. Maybe you can go there. Right in the Old Testament, they would take something, a lamb, uh, two doves, whatever it was, a grain offering, right? And they would take it and they would sacrifice it. They would give it to the Lord. Whatever they were sacrificing, they would totally dedicate that thing, whatever it was, to the Lord. You see, the sacrifice was totally and fully devoted and dedicated and given to the Lord totally and fully, 100%. There wasn't no keeping anything back. There wasn't no cutting the lamb in half and keeping half of it for yourself, giving half of it to the Lord. No, a true sacrifice was whatever you were giving was to be given wholly to the Lord. And when Paul writes in chapter 12, in verse 1, to this church in Rome, he tells them, give yourselves, give your bodies as a whole sacrifice to the Lord. Is he saying, go and uh, offer yourself, key yourself on the altar? No, that's not what he's saying. What he is saying is that you, yourself, your whole body, your whole being, your whole makeup, everything that makes you, you, Paul says, give it to the Lord. In other words, everything about you should be given to the Lord. You should be totally dedicated. You should be totally dependent. You should be totally given. You should be uh, totally devoted wholeheartedly, 100% to God Almighty. What are you supposed to do? You're supposed to give yourself as a living sacrifice to the Lord. You're supposed to be totally devoted to Him. Now, some of you are saying, well, that's the preacher's job. That's the youth minister's job. That's what we pay him to do so that he can be 100% devoted to the Lord. So I don't have to. That's what we pay Brother Phil to so he can sing praises for us. That's what we pay Avery for so he can 100% give himself to the youth program. No! If you are a born-again believer... If you are bought by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, you too are called to give yourself 120% to the Lord. That doesn't even make sense. You can't even get 120%, but you should give it to him. 
Every bit of yourself should be given to the Lord. One famous preacher said this. He said, if he is Lord of all or not Lord at all. Let me say it to you again. He is Lord of all or he's not Lord at all. Give yourself 100% to the Lord. I think about this. One of my favorite movies uh, is Major Pain. Some of you know that. Major, you know Major Pain? I blame that movie for making me join the Marine Corps. It's not like that at all, by the way. So don't be lied to like I was. But I think about Major Pain. And he says, one of somebody says, Major Pain, you got a wife? And he says, if the Corps wanted me to have a wife, they would have issued me one. Right? <laughs> and I think about Major Pain. He was totally sold out 120%. To the Marine Corps. I mean, his whole being, his whole existence was to serve in the Marine Corps. We laugh. We think it's funny. But in all actuality, we should be more devoted to God than Major Payne was to the Marine Corps. Shouldn't we? Paul says it. Give your bodies. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice. Give it to him. That is what the Lord says through his word. So what are we supposed to do? I'm going to tell you what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be totally surrendered, totally devoted, wholeheartedly given to God Almighty. So seniors... When you ask yourselves, when you find yourself in that situation where you say, what am I supposed to do? Give yourself to the Lord. You say, am I wholly 120% devoted to the Lord? Adults, when you go through life and you ask yourself, what am I supposed to do? Give yourself to the Lord. That's what you're supposed to do. Number one is the what. What? Yeah, what? What? The second thing is the why. Why? Why should I do it? Brother Rob, you tell me one good reason why <laughs> that I should give myself to the Lord as a living sacrifice. Well, I don't have to because Paul does. Look at verse 12, verse 1. Look at what he says. He says, therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves, your bodies, a living and holy sacrifice. Look at that. Did you catch it? Therefore, I urge you, brethren... Look at that. By the mercies of God. By the mercies of God, you are to present yourselves. Paul is saying that the reason, the reason that you're supposed to present yourself as a living sacrifice to God Almighty is because of the mercies of God. Because God is merciful. Because he died on a cross for a horrible and wretched sinner like me and you because he was merciful Paul writes and says, therefore, you should give yourselves as a living sacrifice to him. What does that look like? I think about this. Here we go. The movie quotes Mr. Rick, but I, I love it. Okay. You ever seen Toy Story? Who's ever seen Toy Story? <laughs> you know the little aliens that like the claw, right? Those aliens. You know what I'm talking about? One of those movies, there's a scene where uh, the little aliens are hanging from the rear view mirror in the pizza delivery truck. And the toys make a hard left turn, remember? And the aliens go flying out the window. And Mr. Potato Head grabs them and pulls them back in. And what do the aliens say? They say, we're eternally grateful. You have saved our lives. We're eternally <laughs> grateful. You have saved. And so like the whole rest of the movie, the whole rest of the movie, the aliens are following Mr. Potato Head around. We're eternally grateful. You've saved our lives. And Mr. Potato Head is just getting annoyed and stuff, right? And the whole thing. you saved our lives. We're eternally grateful. The whole movie, these aliens are eternally grateful to Mr. Potato Head because they saved, he saved their lives. Where in the world are you going with this, Brother Rob? In the same way, in the exact same way, because Jesus Christ has saved your eternal life, you too should be eternally grateful. Because he hung in your place on an old rugged cross. You too should be eternally grateful. You say, why, Brother Rob, should I give my whole self 
to the Lord. Why should I offer my body as a living sacrifice, Brother Rob? I'm going to tell you why. Because of God's mercy. Because of what he did for you. <clears throat> if you were bought with the blood of Jesus Christ, if your sins have been washed clean, then you too should give yourself as a living sacrifice. The first thing is the what. What are we supposed to do? We're supposed to be do wholly devoted, totally devoted to the Lord. Why are we supposed to do it? Because of God's mercy, because he's been merciful to us. And the last thing, some of you are saying this is the shortest sermon he's ever preached. Don't uh, jump to conclusions. All right, verse, the second, the third thing is the how. Is the how. How are we supposed to carry this out? Look with me, if you would, in verse 2. Look at what he says. He says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable <coughs> and perfect. You say, Brother Rob, how am I to be totally and fully devoted to the Lord? How am I to offer my body as a living sacrifice to God Almighty? I think Paul says there's three things that you need to do in order to do that. In order to offer your body as a holy and living sacrifice, you must do three things. You must uh, uh, do three things. Number one, there must be nonconformity in your life. Nonconformity. Say nonconformity. Non Look at verse 2 again. Look at what he says. He says, and I do, oh, excuse me, and do not be, what, conformed to this world. He says, do not be conformed to this world. You know, it's extremely tempting, Brother Phil, to be conformed to the world, is it not? We live in an age of social media. Uh, we can get on TV and you can see all the flashy ads and advertisements. It's easy to get on, uh, again, social media and, and look at our friends and our family and see what they have and think, oh, I, if I could just get that, if I could just have that thing in my life, if I could just get ahead in life. If I could do this, if I could do that, then I would be happy and then our life would be good. We spend our days trying to get ahead, but in all actuality, you know what we do? We are trying to conform to the world. We're trying to be like the world. And the sad and harsh reality is that there are many Christians, some here today, all across our country, that are indeed conformed to the world. Oh, they put the smile on, put on the suit and tie, even button the button. We come to church, we put our tithe in the offering plate for an hour, hour and 15 of Brother Rob's preaching, but an hour, we act the part, we try to play the part, but in all actuality, in full and total reality, we are conformed to the world. That is our goal, is to try to get ahead in this world. Do you not know, ladies and gentlemen, that you are a sojourner in this world? That you're just passing through? You know what a sojourner is? A sojourner is a temporary resident. You are only temporarily here. Do you not know that? Look at this, 1 Peter Chapter 2, verse 11, Peter writes, he says, Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh which wage war against your soul. In Philippians 3.20, he says this, Paul writes, But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, you are not of the world, so do not conform to the world. If you are bought with the blood of Jesus Christ, you are not of this world. You are a citizen of that world. So don't conform to this one. You're just passing through. You're just a sojourner on your way to glory where it really is if you're bought with the blood of Jesus. Some might be not bought with the blood. And some might be conforming to the world because they are of the world. But if you are, if you know without a shadow of a doubt here today that you're saved by the grace of God, you are not of this world, so do not conform. How, how, how 
Brother Rob, am I supposed to be a living sacrifice to the Lord? Number one, you do it with nonconformity. You don't conform to the world. Number two, how am I supposed to be a living sacrifice? I know I'm supposed to do it because of God's mercy, but how am I supposed to do it? Number two, I'm so glad you asked, and that is with mind renewal. Somebody say mind renewal. renewal. Let's say it like we're going to renew our minds. Mind renewal. Mind renewal. Mind renewal. Look with me at verse 2, if you would. Paul writes, and he says, And do not be conformed to this world, look at this, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Paul says be transformed. Don't be conformed, a negative But be transformed, a positive, how? By the renewing of your mind. What does that mean, to have your mind renewed? It means that mentally you are going to conform to the Word of God. Having your mind renewed means that you are mentally conforming to the Word of God. And therefore, because your mind is being renewed, you're spiritually being transformed into a person more and more like Jesus Christ. You know what we call that? We have a big fancy word for that. That's called sanctification. Say sanctification. Sanctification Sanctification is the process by which you are made more and more and more like Jesus Christ. The word sanctified literally means set apart. Who's the set apart when Jesus Christ... When you are sanctified, when you're being set apart, you're being made more and more and more and more and more like Jesus Christ every single day. How do I do that? By having my mind transformed. Look at it. Look what the scriptures say. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You know how you are transformed how you have your mind renewed and transformed. You know what you do? You turn the stinking Facebook off. You put the dang remote control down. And you pick God's word up and you read it. That's what you do. Oh, but Brother Rob, it's it's hard. I know it's hard. But that doesn't give any... It was hard for Jesus to go to the cross. I'm sure he didn't like... But put the Facebook down. Put the remote control down. Turn Fox News off. Turn off your favorite Dancing with the Stars or American Idol. And pick up the one thing that's really going to transform your mind. And that is the Word of God. And be transformed. You want to know how you dedicate your life solely and truly and wholeheartedly to God? You know how you present yourself as a living sacrifice? You pick God's Word up. And allow Him to transform you. Be transformed. How, Brother Rob? How? How do I present my body as a living sacrifice? You do it, one, with nonconformity. Don't be like the world. Number two, you do it with mind renewal. And the last thing, you do it with godly discernment. Look at verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Do you know how you totally devote yourself to the Lord? You seek His will. What do I do, Brother Rob? Ask the Lord. You know, I find it very interesting, Brother Phil, that, and I'm guilty of it, just being honest. When I'm faced with a decision, you know who the first person I ask is? It's not God. It's not God sometimes. I call, I call uh, friends, I call people in the ministry, I ask Jordan, talk to the deacons, talk to these people, well, I talk to the committee, I talk to all these people. Me and Brother Phil, we spend all day in a staff meeting sometimes talking about stuff, decisions that we're faced with, but oftentimes I find that we haven't asked the Lord. What is God's will? What is the Lord's will in this situation? 
Look at what it promises. Look at this. Keep going. Verse 2, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may be, or that you may prove what the will of God is. Look at what it describes the will of God is. That which is good and acceptable and perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, you will never go wrong being in God's will. I thought that would have got an amen. Let me try it again. You will never go wrong being in God's will. You go wrong being in your will. You go wrong being in your friend's will. You go wrong being in uh, the choir's will or the deacon's will or, or, uh, or the committee's will. But you will never go wrong being in God's will. How? How? Am I supposed to be totally and fully dependent on God? Number one, you do it through nonconformity. Don't conform to this world. You're not of the world, so don't conform to it. Number two, you do it through mind renewal. You do it through mind renewal. You pick up God's word and you read it. You ruminate on it like a, a cow ruminates on the cud. He chews it and regurgitates it. That's kind of gross. And chews it again and, and he, he ruminates on it. You're supposed to do the same thing with God's word. Chew on it, absorb it, learn it, live it. Let it transform your life. You do it by mind renewal. And number three, you do it with godly discernment. Discern what the will of the Lord is for your life. And if you stay in God's will, because that's his will for you, you will be totally, fully, 100% devoted to the Lord. So you ask me today, Brother Rob, what am I supposed to do? Now what do I do? There are adults here. I don't care if you're 85 years old, 90 years old, 150 years old. I don't care. The Lord doesn't care. You say, what am I supposed to do? Pro a problem with, with, with preaching today, Brother Phil, is nobody tells what we're supposed to do. We go through the, the, the theology part, and we say, that was, good. That was a good, um, I learned a lot. Well, listen, how does it transform me? I'm telling you, this is, how you, this is what you're supposed to do with God's Word. You're supposed to be totally devoted to Him. Why are you supposed to be totally devoted to Him? Because of His mercy. How am I supposed to do it? You do it through uh, 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 nonconformity, through mind transformation, and through godly discernment. That's what you're supposed to do. So my prayer is today that you wouldn't walk out of these doors without doing it. I pray it doesn't fall on deaf ears. I don't come up here and do this just for the sake of doing it. I come up because God's called me to do this. I don't stand here in this pulpit and say, oh, that was a great sermon, Brother Rob. I, I could do something else. Be transformed. Put God first in your life. Make him number one. Allow him to transform you. And I promise you, as a living testimony, he will do it. Some of you here today, you may not know the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to tell you what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to turn from your sins and trust in him. That means, you know what repentance is? It means make a U-turn. Let me show you what it means. Watch this. Repentance. And you go the other direction. You're living for yourself. You're in sin. You, you, you're, you're living for yourself. You, 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 when you repent, you, you stop. You say, that's a sin. And you turn, and you turn to God. You trust in Jesus Christ like you would trust in a parachute if you jumped out of an airplane. Like you trust a seatbelt to save you. Let's just do an exercise real quick, and then we'll, we'll, we'll move on. Everybody pick your feet up off the pew. Pick your feet up off the pew. We've done this before. We're going to do it again. We'll remind you. You're trusting in that pew to hold you, aren't you? You're not holding yourself up. You're trusting in that pew. And in the same way, you must trust Jesus Christ. Your church attendance isn't good enough. Your good works isn't good enough. Grandma's faith isn't good enough. You have got to have faith in Jesus Christ that he will save you from your sins. What are you going to do? You're going to turn from your sins and trust in him. My prayer is today... That if you're here and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, turn and trust. But if you're here and you do, give yourself to him. 
He is Lord of all or not Lord at all, as the famous preacher once said. Whatever God is leading you to do, we're going to have a time of response. You're not responding to me. You're responding to God. Be obedient. The altar is open. I'm here to pray with you. Simply be obedient to what God's doing in your life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for tonight, today. God, we thank you for this, Lord, just this chance that you've given us to come into this place and to worship you. God, I pray that whatever you're leading us to do during this time of invitation, Father, I pray that you would help us to simply put you first and just be obedient to you. Lord God, I know the struggles of the world. I know it's difficult sometimes, Father. I know that it's easy to conform. Father, help us not be conformed. But help us just live for you each and every day. So, Father, transform us. Sanctify us. Make us more like you. And, Lord, if we need to be saved, if there be one here that needs to be saved, Father, I pray that you would save that person here today. Lord, I pray this all in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Would you please stand? The altar is open. This is your time to respond. people said amen Amen. coach and rivers if you'd come forward so this is uh i don't know if you know him this is coach ashley in case you didn't know (laughs) this is his daughter rivers and uh what a joy it has been to meet her over the last uh, week or so or not meet her but get to know her and and uh, anyway we had a conversation last wednesday night and rivers decided to give her life to jesus christ and so rivers surrendered to the lord she prayed a prayer of salvation and uh, she just asked the Lord to come into her life and to save her. She realized she was a sinner and needed to be saved. And so here she is. What a time of celebration this is. I told her on Wednesday, I said, when one comes to Christ, all of heaven rejoices. If heaven can rejoice, then so can we. So, what I, so at the end of the service, we got a couple more things to do with the graduates. But at the end, make sure you come by and you welcome your new sister into the body of Christ. What an encouragement you are, Rivers. And what an encouragement you are. You mean, uh, what an encouragement it is just to me and the rest of the church and 
I'm excited to see what God's going to have to do with you in the years to, to come. Uh, if nothing else, then we're going to turn it over to... Congregation, uh, you may be yeah, seated, so please. Be seated, please. The Special Recognition Committee would like to recognize this morning, Miss Carlene Wells. Is Miss Carlene here this morning? There she is. Will you come forward, Miss Carlene? When you walked into the church this morning, you may not have noticed, but because of uh, Miss Carlene's dedication to the church, it was clean as always, and we appreciate every single thing that you do, Miss Carlene. And she's celebrating 10 years of doing this for her. So doesn't she um, need a round of applause? All right, seniors, are you about ready to go? Let's stand while we have a recession and then we'll have our benediction. Dear Lord, we thank you for your many blessings, Lord. We, Lord, we thank you for allowing us to be here today, Lord, to worship you, Lord. We thank you for the message that we've heard, Lord. Lord, we ask that you be with the church, Lord. Be with our staff, Lord. Just be with each individual that came here today, Lord. Lord, be with the ones that are on our prayer list that need your comfort and need your touch, Lord. Lord, we ask a special blessing on our graduates today. Lord, just help them in their, after this milestone, Lord, and the way that they're going to go. They've got a good message today for it, Lord. Lord, we once again thank you for your many blessings, Lord. We ask that you just lead, God and direct us and bring us back at a time, Lord. For it's in Christ's name we do ask and pray. Amen. Yeah. 